Yeah, hi uh, everybody. Um, on behalf of CLSA, I'll uh, love to extend a very warm welcome to everybody. Uh, good evening to all of us who've joined us from India and uh, Asia, and good morning to participants joining us from Europe and US. Uh, uh, today we have the senior management team of HDFC Bank um, with us, uh, represented by Mr. Srinivasan Vaidyanathan, the CFO at the bank. Um, he joined the bank in 2019 from uh, Citigroup, where he was managing director uh, finance and deputy treasurer in the institutional client group. Um, we also have uh, Mr. Rahul Shukla, who heads uh, commercial and rural banking at uh, HDFC Bank. Um, he was um, he's he's had uh, 30 years of experience. Uh, he joined City in 1991, and uh, has been through various functions, uh, including investment banking, corporate finance, and uh, capital markets in India, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Uh, welcome, Rahul, and uh, welcome, Srini. Um, so participants, I think uh, the reason why we thought we should have this call was, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we will focus this conversation a lot about uh, a newly carved out segment for HDFC Bank, commercial and rural, uh, where uh, management uh, expects and we also believe that the prospects of growth and profitability is very strong. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's largely the topic of discussion today. Um, so again, um, uh, Shrini and Rahul, welcome. Um, since um, I'll, I'll just like to start off, uh, Shrini. First is um, as we get started on the sector, uh, on, on, on the conversation, I just wanted to understand from a top-down perspective, uh, the way the banks disclosed data and looked at segments was more like retail and non-retail earlier. And sometime last year, we kind of uh, looked at the book and now we split it into three parts uh, where we've carved out commercial and rural. And obviously, uh, in a lot of conversation, we've spoken about the growth prospects as well. So can you give a top-down view of uh, uh, why the segregation was done and how you are looking at it and how this piece blends so, into the bank? Okay, no, very good. Thank you. That's uh, That actually, actually takes us back to early part of uh, last year when we announced that the future ready organization right that was we, we announced it in may uh, we've been, been working at it uh, from the beginning part of that uh, 2021 time period uh, what what we had seen right uh, two underlying uh, facts which are there one uh, this particular segment uh, of business the middle market uh, we, we call the SME, call the rural. Uh, they are for good part integrated as one and uh, waiting to grow big, right? And, and we want to be capturing a large part. Of it. So that's that's one in terms of uh, the opportunity to be positioned for future and keep growing. The second aspect of that is uh, during the COVID, we noticed that uh, many of the corporates were leveraging the, the supply chain and the distribution chain uh, and pushing the working capital requirements into that segment. And uh, then that is uh, co that combined with that prior comment that I made in terms of how from a growth prospect and uh, importance in the country point of view, the positioning uh, in the GDP profile part of view that this was important. We said, okay, we need to bring the similar kind of a mindset leadership from the corporate banking, which had shown a tremendous amount of growth over the three, four year period driven through digital, driven through relationship management and the reach that we do. And how do we bring that and participate here? So, which means uh, take Rahul as an example, uh, the leader who was running that, bring that experience of the relationship with corporate, bring it down here, leverage that supply chain, distribution chain, connectivity, and broad base that growth kind of a mindset and approach, and using the digital approach to driving it. So that was part of how we wanted to participate and one, market opportunity, two, our execution strength, and we tried to bring both together, and that is how this commercial and rural segment was created. Uh, to say that uh, that's how we participate uh, and, and get the larger market share that we want. And it's critical to the bank. And uh, I, I don't need to talk about the, the other aspect of how it fits in uh, with the financials and so on and so forth. Rahul will talk about how from a liquidity point of view, asset growth point of view, profitability point of view, one of the top notch in the company. And so how do we grow that big? So that is part of 
the genesis of how this came into being at that time. And uh, so it fitted in with what we call the future ready organization at that time. Got it. No, that's useful, Shini. And since we have you, I will, uh, given it's topical before I move to Rahul with very specific uh, questions is uh, we, we've had a bit of uh, my uh, macro issue, right? Oil's at $115, $20. It has its own impact. Um, I know it's still too early. Uh, situation is quite fluid. But um, what do you anticipate uh, from a bank's perspective, if any impact on growth and asset quality, if at all? Okay, yeah, good, good. Uh, actually, it's early, as you said, but it's a good way to think, and and we do need to keep a watch on these things, right? Uh, uh, but, but we make continuous assessment of these, and let me give you some flavor of what we are thinking and how it could be impactful or not impactful, or not known at, at this stage. Uh, see, we have done we have done several scenarios. Uh, one of the baseline scenarios assumes that until June. Um, the, 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 there is some level of uh, such anxiety. Uh, and under that scenario, uh, our economists uh, uh, viewed and reviewed to say that uh, the GDP uh, growth in the FY23, uh, which we expected to be, call it 8.2, 8.3, there about 8 plus percent, uh, can come to slightly above 7, 7 plus percent. So there could be 100 basis point impact 50 basis point impact to the overall economy's GDP. So that is, think about that as a very macro impact uh, that it could have, right? And now, uh, if you peel that and go down below that, okay, if that's at a high level, what does it do to, the, to various sectors and segments, right? If you get down to that. Uh, so if you go down to the retail segment, or consumer segment, private consumption to be much more precise, Private consumption, part of the GDP, you know, so about call it 60% or thereabouts, right? Uh, with the high 50, 60 kind of percentage uh, is the private consumption component in the GDP. Right? Within that, uh, our economists estimate is that about 17% or so is the, uh, is the component that gets driven through uh, fuel, transport, and so on and so forth, right? Out of, the, out of that. Uh, then now that is where this particular oil and the uh, direct indirect impact of all of those comes in into that, right? Uh, that is where that impact on the GDP can come from. That's where it can impact by about 50 basis points, or it could be 100, but 50 basis points at least 7.2 to 7.7 .7 is what we estimate uh, the GDP will be from 8.2, right? It can change like that. Uh, so that's, uh, and again, that is one element of it. The second element of this is, uh, is also determined, which is currently unknown, but we are keeping a watch on it and as much as you will analyze and see we are, uh, which is what part of uh, the oil price and consequently the fuel price is passed on ultimately to the consumer and what part of it remains at the fiscal deficit level, which means how much of this will be uh, subsidized by the government in the form of fiscal deficit and how what uh, gets flown through, remains to be seen, we don't know at this stage, right? Uh, whether it can impact uh, 10, 20 rupees to the uh, per liter to the to the ultimate uh, uh, gas prices on the in the stations, we don't know, right? How how much will get passed on, it depends on that. But within the letter, right, there is a bit of an ask range in terms of what that impact could be. So that's on the uh, macro, what it can do. Now, does that change significantly the disposable incomes? Consequently, when private consumption goes down and so on. What is the disposable income that can be impactful uh, to the end consumer? Uh, there can be slight impact, but we don't think that it will meaningfully change because at the end, if it's a 50 basis point GDP impact, and uh, there will be some, but uh, not a zero impact, some impact in the disposable income, uh, but it is still within the manageable range from a credit uh, growth point of view. At the end of the day, credit growth, uh, call it a nominal GDP, uh, right in inflation, well, this can go down to seven and a half or seven point two or something on the G on the real GDP. The inflation, similarly, from an expectation of five point two, is expected to go to six point two. So, from a nominal uh, growth point of view, it will continue to be uh, at that kind of a previous level, right? To call it uh, thirteen percent or thereabouts, uh, 12, 13 percent or so nominal growth, right? 
and uh, that, that's where we should think that the uh, the money flow and the bank credit will go from there can be some impact very early to say what that credit growth impact can be uh, that is that is one thing and then from a credit quality second aspect of your question if this is what is on the high level credit uh, what is the credit quality too early as i said disposable incomes uh, some marginal impact can be there because they will spend a little more but it cannot because these are discretionary uh, for good amount of uh, uh, good part right so there may be some pullback uh, uh, into certain other kind of a spend and uh, there quite an amount of discretionary spends that they all have at the consumer level to offset this impact if it sustains for a longer period it's a different story right we need to figure out what scenarios we need to run to look at that but at least in the scenario this is what we think on the on the retail front on the wholesale front uh, there there could be some impact on the term funding uh, which corporates are expected to to follow the government infrastructure spending and if there is any change in the plan on that which so far you have not heard if there is then there will be some kind of a term outlay that means either uh, capacity augmentation or participation in the infrastructure can be impactful but again uh, within reason depending on the time that it takes to come back uh, to to not full normal but at least some semblance of normalcy it remains to be watchful uh, and seen what happens to that got it no that was helpful uh, shrini now i'll probably uh, switch to rahul right now uh, you know um, you know obviously the segment is a large part of the book and a heavy lifter from a growth perspective for the bank um since it's newly carved out can you start off uh, talking about how do you break up the book how do you look at it what are competitions in each of the segments of the book if you know a general background because uh, you know as i believe as we go along some disclosures would improve there as well but if you can just talk about how the book is structured and how you look at it sure thanks uh, adarsh um, so there are uh, six uh, distinct uh, divisions you know in commercial and rural banking um if you start you know from the first one that is the uh, mid corporate group uh, we call it emerging corporates and these are all corporates you know with a turnover somewhere between you know 250 crore and 1000 crore um uh, we have a successful business you know um it's a strong you know growth area uh, below this segment is uh, the wholesale sme business uh, which are businesses with uh, turnovers you know between 7 and 1/2 crore to about 250 crore um uh, this is again um, a business um, uh, that's uh, that's been with me for four years um and um, we're just trying to replicate you know the model into you know many other areas uh, below this uh, segment is the retail sme you know the small mom and pop shops you know hardware stores etc these are up to turnover of you know 7 and 1/2 crores uh, and uh, credit you know can be very small the number of entities are very very large um we also have you know healthcare finance uh, where we finance you know hospitals etc uh, and equipment um, and that's you know the fourth piece uh, there are two uh, other pieces one is transportation finance group where we uh, finance uh, uh, either dealers or end buyers of uh, uh, commercial vehicle construction equipment um, uh, tractors etc you know that is the transportation finance group uh, and uh, the last piece you know which is a very important piece is basically the rural banking group where we actually finance uh, farmers and the rural and agri ecosystem now if you think about it you know that these are three to six uh, groups uh, why are these uh, together and what is you know the synergy that i am supposed to you know bring um, and drive right uh, number one you know basically there is commonality of delivery channels uh, we work with you know branches we work with the uh, uh, virtual relationship management team we work with you know csc and uh, we also have you know direct sales channels so it is basically a common delivery platform you know through which uh, uh, sourcing and delivery platform through which you know we go out and uh, um, and 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 approach this business secondly where are these businesses uh, located predominantly they are uh, located in semi urban and rural segment so there is a certain amount of geographic synergy that you know you are pushing um, if you see you know uh, i mean if you look at india the opportunity uh, is in you know uh, urban and metros but there is an equally strong or slightly bigger opportunity uh, in this space uh, the third reason i must tell you is that um, if you look at industry studies Uh, for every one rupee that you lend to you know a large corporate uh, 
um, and to an SME, right? Uh, you make two and a half times, you know, earnings uh, in the SME uh, business. Uh, now you just have to basically make sure uh, that you manage, you know, the NPA very tightly as you would do in the large corporate segment. And suddenly you have a huge, you know, earnings kicker that, you know, com comes in, right? Uh, so my move uh, into, you know, this business is to bring uh, that uh, GNPA, uh, uh, you know, discipline where uh, we made uh, a significant amount of progress and to, you know, basically give that earnings, you um, uh, uh, alpha, you know, to 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 the company, and the fourth thing, which is very important, is that this book is predominantly priority sector lending. Uh, you know, you are in India, you are a bank, uh, you want to continue to grow, you know, with the great ambitions. You will always, you know, basically be looked at uh, whether you are doing your bit in terms of directed uh, lending, you know, practices, um, and uh, this is supposed to, you know, grow, keeping in mind the overall growth plans of the bank. Perfect, uh, Rahul. Thanks for that. Um, just from a market sizing perspective, right? Uh, just putting things together, this is about a 3.8 uh, trillion rupee book. And if I take the SME book of the system and the CV portfolios, it, it, it looks like you'll have a 15% market share, obviously, differently distributed across categories. So how you how do you you know fifteen percent is kind of not like a very very low share. Um, so so how do you look at the market sizing and uh, the opportunity that comes with that? So uh, look, uh, um, if you look at the um, you know MSME potential lending uh, in the country, uh, you looking at uh, what is you know currently funded uh, in working capital and other uh, you know banking areas by. Uh, uh, scheduled commercial banks as well as NBFCs. And that sizing, uh, if you look at, you know, reports of uh, BCG or TransUnion uh, or any other reports would uh, estimate that the total market size is about uh, 12, 20 trillion rupees, right? Uh, our market share in that business is about 13%. Um, and that pit, uh, puts us as, uh, you know, the largest uh, in the segment. And um, uh, fine, you know, 13% uh, may, may, may look, uh, uh, you know, high. Uh, but if you look at the total credit needs, you know, in the MSME segment uh, that, is, that exists in the country, uh, which is not being serviced uh, either, you know, by banks or being serviced as, um, uh, you know, LAP or uh, through the informal systems, that's about, you know, 50 trillion. Uh, now, if I look at, you know, 50 trillion, uh, the market is, you know, two and a half times bigger and you divide, you know, 13 by 2.5, uh, since you're so smart in mathematics, uh, suddenly you will find that uh, my market share is, you know, four or five percent. Should that be? Uh, should, should that be? Obviously, you will ask me saying, you know, when you grow, um, uh, you know, it will have uh, other issues. Um, uh, you know, in this area, and we are going to address um, as you uh, go along, you know, all of that question. Uh, the second thing is the transportation finance group, right? Uh, uh, we, we, we choose and play in certain areas. Uh, MHCV is an area of strength where uh, I think in a year we've increased our market share from about 17% to about 28%. Um, and in the LCV, as well as um, uh, the tractor finance, you know, business, I think, you know, we've increased our market share from ballpark about uh, uh, 5% to, you know, very high uh, single digits. Uh, that's sort of, you know, where we are and we are taking it, you know, one step at a time. And so that's uh, sort of where we are. Uh, but in each one of these segments, the growth uh, uh, potential is, you know, pretty strong. Um, and uh, since you asked, you know, who do we see um, uh, as a competition? Uh, yes, you know, I mean, there's no dearth of competition uh, in India. You know, there are 230 banks uh, of all shapes and sizes. Uh, but uh, the one that we uh, uh, find, uh, have a lot of respect for and continue to learn from is State Bank of India. Uh, that is what we would like to continue to, you know, emulate our uh, model upon with uh, our own HDFC bank way of uh, doing business. Perfect, Rahul. That is super helpful. Um, now, obviously, each part of the book that you alluded to would have a um, uh, growth prospect, right? So when, uh, you know, uh, you've been or you've been talking about uh, very strong growth prospects overall for the book, right? Within that, what parts lead this uh, growth engine forward? There'd be certain parts where you would be from a growth perspective next three to five years more bullish on if you could just highlight the key drivers out of the five, six, seven of them, um, that will be helpful. Uh, 
Sure. So, so number one is, you know, just basically geography expansion. This is a fundamental tenet. Um, uh, we are in hundred uh, plus, you know, cities in the mid corporate group. Uh, and next year we will cross, you know, 200 cities. Uh, we will have presence, we will have lending, you know, that is how we look at, you know, the business. Uh, when you come back and uh, think about the SME business, uh, we today are in 573 districts. And next year we plan to go up to 606 districts. Um, and for all the listeners, you know, these are uh, the smallest sort of administrative zones uh, of uh, the country. And there are about 730 districts in the country. And uh, we estimate that in a couple of years, you know, 650 ballpark is, you know, where uh, you find economic activity. And the third piece is uh, the village. Uh, we today are present in about uh, 100,000 villages. We've made progress, you know, since uh, October when we said uh, we're going to expand um, uh, in this area. And by uh, in 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 two years from now, our estimate is to be in 200,000 villages. Now you think about 200,000 villages. It, it, do I do I saturate my growth, you know, potential? Uh, no, because there are 640,000 uh, villages today in the country, and I'm planning to be in 200. Thousand and that's the rate uh, uh, at which we are growing. Now, second thing I must uh, tell you is that there's a huge untapped uh, potential in just the uh, SME business. We talked about 50 trillion. Uh, there's a lot of you know um, uh, uh, people who borrow from outside. Uh, I last weekend I was in a village um, in eastern UP uh, where people hadn't heard about ECLGS, they hadn't heard about CGTMSC, and uh, there was a, a school with uh, about 20 buses, and they were you know continuing to fund all of their EMI payments uh, without any default or stress, right? Uh, so if you think about you know basically in that sense, today we have a lot of data. Uh, the GST data. Uh, Adarsh, you go to a Kirana store, uh, even he or she is filing uh, GST today, uh, which is pretty helpful in terms of going out and doing, you know, expansion of credit and bringing all of these uh, uh, entities in. Uh, think about healthcare finance. In the last four years, there are about 30 hospitals and medical colleges that have been built uh, uh, in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, in the next three years, there's a similar number which is getting constructed in every single district, uh, which is, you know, effectively the potential. I mean, that is a business where credit is not growing because uh, uh, during COVID, uh, they had huge cash flows and uh, cash flows and they've run uh, the book down. Uh, but that's sort of, you know, how you look at it. Uh, think about rural. Um, you have uh, this piece where, um, you know, uh, agricultural uh, uh, is just about 15% of the GDP, but 60% but of the people live over there. And if you think about, you know, the lending, it is not just pre-crop funding today. Uh, that nature of credit extension is moving to gold loans. It's moving to um, uh, uh, home improvement loans. It's moving to consumer durable loans and, um, um, uh, you know, two-wheeler loans. Uh, in a very small village uh, today, you find uh, showers. Um, uh, normally, people use a tap, you know, in uh, villages uh, to, to 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 take bath, and uh, you have the electric, you know, pumps available. Um, uh, I met a customer in Indore yesterday, um, a good client of ours, and these are solar pumps, you know, which basically get you the water under pressure, and they're using that. Uh, you are having, you know, Western style um, uh, commode. Sorry for you know just naming it, but those who are in India. Uh, they will know, you know, what a dramatic change that is uh, from open defecation to, you know, basically having a toilet inside uh, the Indian style to the Western style. And you have all of these things, you know, getting sold. Uh, so rural is changing, you know, quite dramatically. Uh, and rural has an opportunity because even today, 70% of rural districts have a, have a credit to deposit ratio of less than 10% because banks have, you know, not, not, not uh, done justice in terms of just the aspirations of people over there. Transportation, there is a, a lot of, you know, focus on multi-mode, et cetera, you know, that is happening. So that's why I continue to be, you know, quite bullish, uh, you know, about the prospects of this business. And we talk about a dramatic, you know, one plus one extension, expansion uh, next year. Uh, now, now you may ask saying, how will you do, you know, basically this one plus one? Today, what has happened, Adarsh, is that in the last two years, not only the large corporates have delevered, even the SME have delevered and balance sheets are strong, right? And now they are going through the growth phase. 
we have already gone out and given 20 or 30 percent ECLGS, which does not require collateral. So they have the loan availability for funding, you know, uh, this particular growth. So we are in a good position because, you know, we basically were strong in terms of ECLGS extension. And we're going to, you know, basically see the benefit of that in business growth in the next uh, uh, two to three years. The third thing I must tell you that the cash conversion cycle of these businesses has, you know, shrunk quite dramatically pre-pandemic. What was 90 or 120 days is today 30 or 45. Now, in this event, uh, looking at my book, uh, why should I not, you know, basically uh, dream about a, uh, a, a, a dramatic expansion, you know, which is basically uh, what the, what the uh, intention is out over here. Uh, because we have great confidence in, in, in how we do this business, how we've been guided by our MD and uh, CFO and, you know, uh, risk uh, seniors. Um, and uh, we just want to capitalize on this huge opportunity that exists today. Yeah. And um, Rahul, if you, if you did mention about geographical reach and how you want to expand that, uh, just to start off, uh, what puts HDFC, you know, obviously you're a large player already in the segment. What's the key unique uh, uh, mode that HDFC would have where you could like, like make it into a leadership business? Um, let me, let me uh, put, uh, you know, what customers tell me since 1st of October, every week, you know, I've traveled uh, and not to the big cities, you know, but to the small cities and the clients basically tell, um, and, and many of them say that it was, it is our SME digital platform which they use. What has happened during the pandemic is that, um, look, uh, business, uh, small businesses, uh, traditionally, you know, uh, bank with, uh, with, with the banks, which uh, um, uh, where relationship was started by their grandfather or great grandfather. Uh, and so these are, you know, good luck accounts. Uh, uh, during the pandemic, you know, when digital wasn't working, uh, they basically said either they can have the good luck account or good luck in terms of continuity of business, uh, which is when, you know, basically there is a dramatic movement that has uh, started happening. Uh, you can uh, today over 75% of my customer base is on my SME digital banking platform where they can do everything digitally right? Uh, BC, um, uh, the, wh 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 whether it is uh, LC, BG, uh, uh, your collections and payments, uh, bidding for, you know, contracts, uh, you name it, FX, etc. you know, all of that is being used. And many clients say that they actually, you know, give us a premium uh, because they, are, uh, they, they think that they will not be able to adapt to uh, other platforms that uh, exist in the marketplace. Now, digital is not the only story. Uh, if you look at, uh, say, a district called Samba, which is in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, right? You know, I mean, and the largest bank over there is the JNK Bank. Uh, and, and this district is between the border of, you know, at the border of Pakistan and India. Uh, we are the second largest in terms of number of business accounts. And 100% is digitally activated. It tells you two things for, you know, being successful in this business. For being successful in this business, you have to have, you know, the distribution, which is what the bank has, right, in every single area, not just CRB. And the second is that you have to have digital. Um, uh, because today, you know, when, when, when they have to get started before they get used to it, they need handholding, you know, which is what uh, basically, you know, um, uh, is, 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 uh, uh, something, you know, that they, they, they need help with. Uh, the third thing I also, I must tell you, um, um, the, the second thing other than my digital is that we have been investing in this business, you know, for several years. I've been around, you know, for last four years, right? We've been at it. Now, how does, you know, today I feel, uh, because this is a push business, uh, but I feel that HDFC Bank has reached a position where we are actually getting the benefit of brand pull and network effect, because there will be a promoter who will, you know, basically um, be married. So, uh, you know, the family of the wife, uh, son, uh, son's wife's family. When you think about it, you know, that network effect is, you know, what is benefiting HDFC Bank today, which is, you know, very difficult to replicate because uh, if you look at uh, the network uh, network uh, law or value of network, Metcalf's law, right, uh, the, 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 the larger number or market share you have, uh, the, the faster you should expand. And that's, you know, how you look at it. So we are basically getting in that sweet spot a brand pull today, others. Got it. No, that was useful. Uh, if I shift gears, Rahul, um, 
given that the book is PSL compliant, you just talk about directionally, uh, even if not specific numbers about profitability of the portfolio. And uh, once you think of expanding it the way that you are intending to, does that materially change in, um, in uh, did you see change in profitability? So the absolute profitability directionally, and then does that change once the book starts growing at a fast pace? So, so, so profitability, I won't, uh, you know, sort of comment. Uh, I mentioned, you know, uh, that one rupee lending, you know, uh, what do you earn in, in SME in, you know, the, the general industry and, and you're a smart guy. You can, you know, basically go through that. Uh, you make a living out of it. Uh, but the second thing I must tell you is that, um, that um, look, uh, where is India headed, right? Uh, in terms of banking. Uh, you can bank large corporates and uh, you can bank, you know, uh, customers in urban centers. And there are a lot of banks over there. Um, the story of India is, you know, basically going deeper. Uh, and, and, and obviously uh, managing, you know, the book quality is an issue. But, you know, uh, that, that, that we have uh, a method uh, behind our madness, you know, which has worked for us, right? You know, that's why the numbers are so dramatically, you know, different compared to what we see in the industry. Uh, but when you go deeper, you know, today uh, to the shopkeeper, to the street vendor, to across, you know, basically the country, your loan sizes are miniaturizing. They're getting smaller, right? And when it miniaturizes, you should see, see that your profit basically increases. So you have to miniaturize your loans to maximize your, you know, profitability, because to a certain extent, you know, you are right. As you go to a certainly, you know, smaller number, deeper, uh, much larger book, much larger number of entities, you have to build a certain, you know, level of uh, cost of credit while you are, you know, managing it. And so you will have to work through all of that. Um, and, and frankly, I think, you know, I basically see a better outcome, you know, two, three years down the road uh, than it is today because uh, uh, loan sizes will continue to, you know, become smaller. So it's granular. We like it. You know, it's uh, profitable. Uh, generally, we have a good uh, uh, experience in terms of collections, uh, et cetera, you know, that we do. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty uh, sanguine about uh, the development of, you know, the uh, profitability curve, um, uh, so to speak. Perfect. And uh, Rahul, this brings me to the next question on asset quality, right? Again, um, uh, you know, if you go through system data, um, SME is and uh, the nature of the businesses could be a little more volatile. Uh, so the S, uh, the NPAs of certain, um, you know, PSU banks are high, but we, we've historically had good uh, data coming out on the business banking side. So how, you know, again, once you expand the book, how do you maintain asset quality? What are the mitigants? Um, uh, what's the competitive advantage, let's say, vis-a-vis -vis an SPI you have in underwriting or in data analyticals? Uh, and, and, and here what I'm doing uh, in this question, Rahul, is also blending one or two questions that I've got from uh, investors. So, yeah, if you could um, answer that. So, others, uh, look, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, credit is tough, but it is also simple. Uh, you got to know, you know, uh, the person that you're doing, you know, business with, Right. Uh, so when you uh, have to know, I think many of these, you know, customers are basically still, you know, uh, relationships of the bank on the liability side. Yeah. Uh, I was in Pratapgarh. There was um, a, 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 a small furniture uh, guy who had about five acre of land. Um, his borrowing was from a nationalized bank, but his um, um, uh, savings uh, was with HDFC Bank. Uh, and he said, you know, it was uh, a very well-respected uh, bank in a small town. It's, uh, it's a town where you have one main road and there is uh, settlements on both sides and that's how it is. Uh, so, uh, plus a lot of mosquitoes. Uh, so, so but, but, but that's how, you know, they, 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 they think about the bank. So, we know the customers. We know, you know, account behavior, right? And those are the customers we are, you know, tapping. So, as the bra bra uh, branch reach uh, increases... Uh, you can imagine, you know, basically I get to know even more. I went to a village where there were, you know, 25 colleges and um, uh, schools and there was a rice miller in the middle of nowhere with a turnover of, you know, 75 crore. And we said, OK, we're going to open a branch over there because there was a good business over there. So we basically work together with the branch so that we know, you know, the customer. The second thing is that, you know, you need to know what they do 
and so you have to look at cash flows and we've often said that you know cash flow lending cash flow lending everybody said says you know the same thing uh, but cash flow lending has you know worked for us because uh, you remember uh, the month of uh, may 2019 we were even at that point of time a very large sme bank and at that point of time the capacity utilization of msme industry in the country was 13% and even then uh, we did not have a spike uh, in npa now you can say oh there was moratorium x y and z when the moratorium went away even then that sme book you know continued to you know basically remain intact and so we are very confident in terms of that now why are we confident when you you know basically have uh, a client who banks with you wife's account savings account is with their, with you the daughter's you know savings account with is with you everybody opens you know basically a fixed deposit with you know their daughter and you know for their daughter's son etc that is with you um, they put their locker so so there is a full 360 degree relationship management now that person may still default because business you know goes belly up but if you have a full relationship intentionally nobody is going to go rogue on you and and that's that's uh, the, the the way of doing business uh, and um, and then you know add to that uh, basically our collateral cover you know and uh, things like that those are there so the most important things which help me is that i know you know the customer and their behavior uh, they are coming through a network effect or in the branch or a very strong referral many times there are clients who tell us don't onboard you know that particular client and it's happened uh in varanasi a client said look i told you 2 years ago and in 3 months you know that account went bad uh, because we didn't on board you know taking uh, the client feedback so 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 the network effect is playing the branch effect is playing and the full 360 degree re relationship on which we are maniacally focused we just do not you know deviate from that and uh, that will continue to help me yeah others perfect uh, i just uh, participants i see some questions being typed in uh, i'll have one or two more questions and we'll open the floor uh, two ways you can either type in a question in the q and a tab or you can raise your hands and we'll uh, take your question um, rahul the uh, other thing is uh, if if you go through the whole pandemic period and um, you know sme was a sector which got material amount of dispensations be it um, uh, in the form of restructuring be it the form of eclgs uh, and now you got a commodity shock right as you come out of those uh, shocks um, how do you see portfolio tracking because uh, i think um, you know the whole of the investment community would 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 broadly agree that large corporates and now retail after covid looks relatively stable uh but there are some question marks on how um the sme portfolio holds out how the eclgs portfolio holds out so if you can just give uh, what you're seeing on ground as we come out of those dispensations look um, uh, you know there are about 65 million msme entities in the country right yeah. okay? and there are about 15 million in the uh, banking system formal banking system yeah. um uh, i'm sure that there are entities you know which have uh, issues uh, but by number of entities you know my uh, numbers are not so large and i have a set of you know basically customers who i do business with uh, within you know the hdfc bank tenants um and uh, we are okay we were okay you know during uh, the pandemic and we are okay on our portfolio uh, post the pandemic in fact i must tell you adarsh that um, uh, whatever was our new npa creation in 2018 Uh, last year uh, you know the new npa creation was half of that and this year the new npa creation is flat at the same level for uh, sme business and that is how you know confident i am so the book has become uh, more than twice and the new npa creation has you know become basically half and remain stable and the book continues to grow at you know 35 40% you guys look at everybody's growth rate if you just add my bbg and eg growth rate that is at 39% you know and 10% you know qoq uh, so on the largest book you know this is basically the growth rate so i i feel very confident now you have this new issue right you know and we have to monitor that right so at this point of time what are your customers saying uh, 
uh, is the input cost you know gone up yes it has gone up if you look at agrochemicals you know they use crude oil you know and in crude oil uh, that particular uh, uh, cost has gone up 30% uh, in auto, there is metals and alloys. Um, you know, they use that. That cost has gone up 30%. Cashew processing. The raw cashew, you know, process prices have gone up 15 to 20%. If you look at ceramic, the gas and freight are the biggest element of cost. That's gone up 80%. So you have, you know, basically a large proportion on consumption um, and as well as the non-consumption, non-consuming uh, industries. Because uh, we also took stock and, uh, you know, during the pandemic, we did this, you know, when we look at cash flows how much cash everybody has and looked at our portfolio and this also we've been doing you know our portfolio analysis and we continue to do every two week a big survey uh, with uh, my set of customers right now to what extent is the ability to pass on you know these increases in agrochemical it is 90 percent in auto brass cashew processing casting it's 100 percent if you look at poultry industry you know the ability to pass on is about 70 percent uh, if you look at poultry layers you know uh, i mean obviously there is no issue you know it just goes past through Pulse mills, you know, ability to pass on 90%. We are basically, you know, uh, paying for that uh, at uh, the point of purchase. PVC pipe industry, where, you know, PVC resin has gone up to 150% in terms of cost, but the ability to pass on the price is about 25%, right? But in most of these, Given the strong growth dynamics that everybody sees, you know, for basically the next quarter, they don't see an impact in the extent of, uh, you know, demand. Will the demand get pulled down, right? Now, now, that, 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 that's a fair amount of detail. I don't know whether people want more detail. I'm happy to give. But on transportation side, right, you know, um, uh, all the CV manufacturers, the cost has gone up about five to seven percent. The ability to push out, you know, basically that is about three to four percent. And this industry has been increasing um, uh, all the while. But the industry is also aided by the heavy infrastructure spending, you know, by the government. Right. So, so, you know, so far, so good. But this is, you know, portfolio management is uh, uh, is 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 um, is an art and also a science. You have to, you know, basically take stock uh, every two weeks or every week, you know, depending on how turbulent the situation is. And uh, so, at so at this point of time, you know, we 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 feel pretty confident. Uh, there is yes, you know, a cost impact, uh, but is there a demand impact? You know, largely other than you know maybe people postponing purchases of jewelry. That is a segment. Right, you know that'll get postponed. Nobody uh, may want to buy when uh, gold is at uh, two thousand dollars. Though yesterday, I think it came off eighty-five dollars or so. Uh, so, uh, but mostly, you know, I think demand impact is not seen or not talked about at this point of time. Perfect. Um, so, Rahul, I'm just uh, starting to read out participants. Just as a reminder, I do see questions, but please type in or raise your hands. So, uh, Rahul. The, uh, you know, one of the questions is: For a long time, we've heard the argument against spreading uh, to rural being prohibitively high collection costs post default. Has that changed? Is there digital initiatives there, and how is it economically viable today? Right. So, um, uh, you know, going and collecting in rural post default, and uh, is that changing? Is that prohibitively expensive? Yeah. Sure. So, so, so let me address this. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, when you see India, you know, from a macro perspective and from a policymaker's perspective, um, in rural, uh, agri is just a fifteen percent of our GDP, but sixty percent of the people still, you know, are there. So you will have a lot of government policy push in terms of com completely changing. Uh, you know, the rural nature from agrarian to a rural, you know, small industry uh, or agri, um, uh, small agri business and, you know, things like that. Uh, that is how, you know, basically the push has been. Uh, even when you look at uh, MSME, right, uh, if you think about it, 99% of the MSME entities are micro entities. And, you know, I say that the Chota Banya always remains a Chota Banya in this country, never becomes a Bada Banya. If all of them, you know, 6.62 and a half million were moved from being micro uh, to a small business and hired just one more person. That is roughly about 62 million jobs. You saw, you know, basically the election results, the narratives, it's all about jobs and it is going to, you know, basically get, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that chatter will increase, right? Now, why is the government focused on that? When you make the micro entity a slightly larger and they hire one person, uh, 62 million jobs is not you know bad but if that one person is 
supports you know like three other people in the family that's about you know spending capacity is getting raised for 250 million people that's the policy that is how you're looking at it so i have to you know basically look at it you know from the same style now what has changed in terms of collections right uh, the, firstly you know my presence is much larger today uh, compared to you know several years ago i have you know the farmers uh, saving account uh, mrs farmers you know saving account uh, sorry, you know, we don't have, you know, too many um, she farmers, right? You know, I mean, that's just the uh, nature of the thing other than in, you know, tax uh, tax application or so. Uh, but but those accounts are there, those cash flows are there. Now, so, so, so those things and collections are well tied up, you know, you have to do that. Now, there is one element where uh, you say that, look, uh, uh, there might be an issue, which is like shopkeeper financing. Uh, because the shopkeeper, you know, basically does business in cash, you know, at three o'clock or four o'clock, it's peak time, you know, he or she cannot, you know, come to the branch to go out and deposit. And you need to, you know, basically do daily collections. So you have, you know, basically the digital wallet solutions, team up with them, they will go and, you know, collect the money at 8 p.m. They charge you, but they, you know, basically send it back. Secondly, you know, a lot of insurance is available today in the marketplace, you know, to, to, to go out and protect your uh, portfolio. And the last bit that I must tell you is that the government has about 25 or 30 different schemes, which guarantee in some form or shape. If there is a dispensary getting opened in uh, a rural area, you know, today, uh, Greenfield, 75% is guaranteed by the government. ECLGS was 100% guaranteed by the government. You uh, are a buyer of LCV, there is CGTMSC. You look at PM Kusum, uh, you look at, uh, you know, the uh, poultry piggery, you know, and all, all of these schemes. Agri Infra Fund, um, I'm told that, you know, we're going to be felicitated by the minister soon, uh, but uh, I don't know, you know, whether the dates are fixed up or not, but uh, that is up to you know 20 million rupees it is uh, guaranteed by the government now you have to follow uh, you are in india you got to do business over here you have to follow you know where the government is taking you you have to apply your mind saying you know where the growth will come because you know jobs have to come and uh, where you know the government policy is going to get pushed and you do business in that fashion digital works i mean yesterday you saw that there is a upi that has started on non-internet you know connected phones right in india so, so when we did an uh, NPCI or uh, just those uh, online remittance, you know, the world didn't believe, then UPI, the world didn't believe. And now we are on non-internet, you know, money transfers and uh, the world may not believe, but one day, you know, the numbers are going to basically go out and become very large. So the digital ecosystem is fantastic. The credit bureau data is today, you know, mature and fantastic use it right uh, the gst and the company law etc you know data is out there and available use it and then there are collection mechanisms you put it together the margins are also higher no for me to be able to you know pick up the cost got it Ral. um now one of the questions is um they says that they've picked up extensively from channel checks with small banks that hdfc bank is underwriting their customers at lower yields um uh, these banks seem to be confident it's not possible to work with so low yields and that doesn't price the risk adequately. So how do you, like, you know, basically saying that HDFC goes and refinances at yields, which is not like adequately well-priced so for the risk. So if you could elaborate on that. Look, um, I, I, I don't know. I also hear and I also, you know, see uh, examples and I... I don't want to quote these examples, but uh, but tell me, um, uh, we are in a um, uh, uh, slightly, you know, I mean, yield compression scenario, right, in the last one year. Uh, and we've had a cost of funding, you know, which is uh, what it is, right? Yeah. You're having a growth of, you know, basically last quarter, we said, you know, uh, BBG and EEG about 39, 40%, right? Uh, so logically, you would think that uh, NIM is going to compress. If if what other banks are telling you is you know basically right, but others that is not happening. So I can uh, instead of giving you anecdotes or telling you about practices, uh, maybe it is uh, you know I, I I don't know it's it's NB or, or or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, my results demonstrate. And I must tell you that we saw in our discussions that uh, uh, yields have to, you know, tighten inflation, you know, basically is going to come, you know, I mean, liquidity was, you know, a wash, uh, there was, you know, some pullback in, in all of that. Uh, 
I mean, if you go back, you know, six months ago, we've done so much homework that if in the next fiscal adarsh uh, that uh, interest rates uh, and funding cost actually increased, right? If, if funding cost increased, right? Um, uh, we will still be all right in terms of our delivery. That is what my confidence about my portfolio is because I have done significant amount of work from October to, you know, the month of March in preparing, you know, basically uh, for a scenario uh, that uh, should, you know, funding costs were to shoot up, what would happen given inflation is, you know, going up. Perfect, Rahul. Um, the other question comes from Prashant Dadia. How do you ensure... Uh, Yes. Uh, there's one other one other way to think about it is also right when you when you hear that uh, the people don't price for risk, we don't price for their risk. We price for our risk, right? So you should you should have that in mind, right? Uh, you you there is nobody uh, any of these banks whatever you're referring to from a credit cost point of view or NPA point of view are close to us. So for them they need to price their risk. Right? We price our risk, that's all. So our yield cannot be uh, equated to their risk model. Got it. No, fair point, Trini. Uh, I'll uh, go to the next question, Rahul, is um, how do you ensure customer service remains healthy despite uh, sharp rise in customer base? Small banks, uh, uh, regional banks have always said that uh, that's where they've differentiated from the large banks, right? Be it SBI or HDFC. So a little more customized service, a little more RM-based approach uh, for the regional small banks help them. So. Dahul, when you go mass scale, is so, that so? So RM is okay. You know, we have uh, the branch in the RM, but that is not going to you know basically uh, materially lower you know uh, customer issues. Uh, you have to continuously you know train your people on how you know to to resolve these issues and also uh, make it available to the customer that they can resolve it by themselves. So uh, when you when I say SME digital banking, seventy five percent of uh, the people are there, uh, customers over there. Um, you should know that uh, most of the options are self-service. So today it doesn't happen that if they, you know, uh, submit a stock statement on email and somebody forgets to basically go out and, and, and this has happened in another bank, uh, forgets to update it and then the limits drop and, you know, checks start bouncing. In our case, you know, they can basically just submit it, you know, digitally. Uh, on the platform and it does an auto update. So there is no question of, you know, limit dropping. What is the nature of, you know, these queries? These are, you know, the types of queries that, uh, that happen on interest rates and things like that. A lot of these have to be, you know, the, the front end. So we've gone uh, in retail SME, 100%, you know, digital origination and 100%, you know, digital self-service, right? And we are moving towards a, a majority of, you know, basically the disbursements on digital where there is all e-signing, et cetera, no paper involved. It's only the credit piece, you know, where we are basically going to continue to, you know, scale up uh, given that we've been at it, you know, for the last, you know, three, four years on, 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 on our system. Uh, so, so, so let me give you a stat, right? You know, I mean, obviously a bank will have a lot of, you know, complaints and uh, mostly in, you know, retail, if there's an issue, I don't get a checkbook, I write, you know, the way I write, it may be treated as a complaint. I think, you know, if you look at the commercial and rural banking, given the number of customers that we handle, it may be about, you know, 0.35% of the total number of complaints in the bank. And uh, what we do, because Sashi is so focused on this, is that we look at it on a weekly basis and each one of these are, you know, basically uh, tracked for TATs and they basically are responded to. Um, and, and customers will make, you know, a lot of complaints. Somebody may just, you know, want uh, uh, rate reduction, somebody may need, you know, freebies, somebody may have genuine issues, right? Uh, all of that. But as a bank, as a service company, you have to address it. So we have in CRB a customer service team whose job is to only do that. And, and let me tell you that that team reports to me directly. So, so I am the owner of, you know, basically customer queries uh, in my unit uh, that we, you know, basically push. So make your platform that queries are minimized. And when the queries, you know, basically come, go out and, you know, respond to it, you know, very promptly. Got it. Um, now, the next question is from Olivier. Um, he, he, he asked that uh, you mentioned SME being the benchmark in uh, rural and SME. Um, just could you expand on that statement? Uh, I think what, what, 
implies is, is that the brand or sheer distribution or there are more modes against which you would probably need to compete uh, for market share gains there no look uh, you know i mean in this country uh, everybody has learned banking you know from state bank of india right so so that's just uh, a, a truism and we have to continue to learn because there are so many good practices whatever we may have achieved you know uh, fine it is uh, not um, uh, uh, not uh, something to 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 talk less about because you know we've done uh, uh, pretty well but we still you know go out and learn there are areas where i go um, and we call on you know basically uh, the regional managers we want to work together in the ecosystem and uh, that's how we we basically learn so sbi um uh, you know goes out and supports their clients um you know basically helps them you know through tough times or cycles you know i mean they they do a fantastic job of that and uh, there are many other you know such practices that we have to look at it at the end of the day if you look at our balance sheet today uh, that you know represents uh, you know in in its composition you know maybe closer to sbi right uh, in in how we look at it because we are not choosing only to do the easy bits Uh, we are learning and choosing to do you know basically the tougher bits but managing you know the npa very very prudently and carefully got it and um, a related question was uh, like apart from spi this comes from vivek apart from spi uh, what's like the competition right like like you were starting you you started to move early and expanding now are there similar banks on the private side that you see or is it like a fairly large first mover advantage that the bank has in how you kind of gone ahead with the digital uh, uh, sorry with the geographical expansion and the reach and the products in this segment look uh, sorry adarsh look uh, you know if you think about uh, sbi and us uh, we would be banks you know above uh, 2 trillion in terms of our exposure yeah. in uh, sme yeah. um and uh, you know the others are less than 1 trillion so it's okay got it got no but it can always be rahul the question is always be either there are pockets people working geographically not the 1 trillion size but either there are or or people working from let's say 1/4 your size but getting there and hence uh, being meaningful competition look uh, i don't see uh, them in 606 districts and 100000 villages uh, look others uh, you know i, I understand uh, you know you uh, analyze banks and uh, uh, investors you know basically put money and uh, you know whatever it may be i think one thing that continues to you know i feel these days is underappreciated uh, about us is our distribution muscle and whether you look at in the border of you know arunachal pradesh or the border of uh, you know uh, in in jammu and kashmir or you look at mumbai uh, and uh, there are different banks um, uh, with you know different dig- digital capabilities but when i analyze you know the slbc data i have market share and i have you know mostly in most of these places uh, 99% 100% you know digital usage but i don't see that you know basically in uh, you know when i survey the competition in terms of that data uh, that in in the slbc uh, in that come to us uh, so look uh, you know uh, frankly look let, let 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 me put it this way you can push me and ask me and i can be you know competition centric right and and i think it's a, it's a negative uh, you know basically vibe uh, or or way of thinking or we can all look and say that the pie is so large and maybe uh, i am learning from sbi others can you know learn from us you know what we are doing and that we can all continue to grow and 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 that is what we are focused on and that's a positive approach right i, I don't you know basically bother uh, that much about uh, uh you know who's the new competition in town because there will always be a competition in some area or the other i mean that's the name of the game in banking yeah okay. Sir, let me add one thing others uh, let me let me add you one thing uh, the the network eff- uh, effect the investments and the distribution strength that all of that all alluded to uh we'll give you a couple of things right you take the nine months period to december nine months of uh, this financial year to december 
Uh, we expanded our physical distribution by 171 branches. This is to supplement the digital effort. We need some physical too, right? 171 we expanded. Uh, keep, keep in mind that the April to June period was a, was a terrible period, right? Almost a washout. Despite that, we had 171 branches. Uh, go back and during this period, you I don't need to say you benchmark and see what uh, uh, other significant contribution uh, significant competitors were uh, investing and adding distribution. Go back since uh, the period of uh, COVID. Take it from March 20 onwards, right beginning of COVID. Uh, we've added 525 branches right, during this COVID period. March 20 April April 1st. 2020 onwards, we've added 525 branches. And it, it takes us longer time uh, to bring this to be a fruitful growth because the uh, kind of a maturity model in a branch is one and a half, two years, call it six to eight quarters it takes for a mature model. We continue to make these investments for exactly the reason that Rahul alluded to, why they are important and fits our context uh, for the growth, right? That's the kind of investments we have done. Got it. Um, one of the questions, no, rather a comment and a, and a uh, request of coming from participant, and I think all of us will echo the same, is could you start staring more granular data on your portfolios on a quarterly basis and lead disclosures uh, for the commercial segment uh, being the largest bank in the country? Is this that uh, investors deserve a little bit more in this time when you know the this segment is becoming a very large part of the bank, right? So I think I don't disagree. I think uh, Srini, Rahul, and uh, uh, the investor relation team. That's a uh, request coming in from investors, and I think fairly, you know, it's a it's it's a fairly, um, uh, you know, I would say a practical request in the sense that um, we we should share a little more data on a more consistent basis on this sector uh, on this segment. Uh, I see the point. Uh, we'll give a thought to it to see how we should approach it. Uh, quite quite valid in terms of uh, what is being asked, right? Uh, but I do want to give two two context for you, right? We will give a thought to it and see how we should approach it. For sure, we'll do uh, take that feedback. Uh, but two things that uh, I want to leave uh, leave the thought here. One is uh, in, in terms of I, I'll tell you uh, it happened about. Uh, three, four quarters ago, right? Uh, we gave some, not necessarily on the yield, I gave some information about the customer acquisition, right? What are we acquiring on the customers? And uh, when we gave that information, uh, the next thing I got is, over a period of the next one weeks to two weeks, I got several calls from my branches, right? To say, why are you talking about these things, about how we are acquiring and how many we are acquiring? Because immediately some of the competition banks calls various regions and districts and intensifies to say, how is the bank across, uh, across your street doing this and you're not able to do? Is the question that the competition banks locally are getting. Right? So my branch people call me to say, Why, what is the need for you to talk? and unnecessarily bother us here. Leave us alone, we are doing the business, we let us do, right? So that's that's one thing, right? Uh, the second point I want to leave is even in this call, you can see in the last 20, 30 minutes, how many times we talked about competition, what competition says and what competition does. Right? So I just want to leave that thought and go. This is what I, I did give three, four quarters ago some things, and I got a big backlash from my own people in the branches to say, why do you do this? I appreciate your uh, constraints as well, uh, Srini and the bank. So yeah, I, I we appreciate that. Uh, the next question, a little more macro. So um, it's a question more on data privacy is how does HDFC Bank manage the increased exposure to personal information managed through its new digital offerings? Um, all the data privacy and security matters, uh, you know, and, 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 and it's getting more increasingly more customer acquisitions, more data insights you get. How do you manage uh, manage that, Srini? This is, this is, we have one of the uh, we, we have an information security uh, team. We have an information security council and a policy uh, that we follow both uh, take, taken from the government mandates as well as RBI mandates. Uh, and we have a committee of the board that reviews uh, 
uh, our policies and procedures and how it is implemented. And uh, we, we believe that uh, we have one of the top notch in terms of information security management. Got it. Um, Rahul, one question and a uh, you know, rebuttal to your one plus one uh, expectation and disbursement is, uh, it, you know, obviously some of this gets premised on strong nominal GDP growth and hence uh, uh, reflected in the bank's growth, but uh, with inflation spiking, commodity prices being a little haywire, um, what would be the sensitivity of a little tougher macro on, um, on, on, on how you would look at those uh, one plus one disbursements and your growth going forward? So, um, look, uh, at this point of time, uh, from what I see, um, and, you know, we are all watching, you know, the uh, crisis, um, and there's a shortage of sunflower, there's a shortage of, you know, basically um, uh, blend oil, um, uh, the shortage of, you know, basically, or not, I mean, wheat prices have spiked up and so on and so forth. But, you know, I don't see an issue with that. Uh, obviously, if uh, the uh, economy, you know, changes dramatically, um, then it's a different issue. Now, if this is, you know, a uh, remains persistent, um, uh, you know, you can see that global supply chains are going to get localized, and which basically means, you know, it is going to fuel, you know, higher inflation. We are moving away from laws of comparative advantage, and we are going to, you know, go towards lower growth. Uh, India will have uh, better growth, but uh, yes, you know, we uh, may have an inflation issue, etc. You know, I mean, those things are a given because oil prices are high and, you know, CAD will go up, etc. Uh, but remember, we are the only large market that is open uh, in, in a very positive manner to the Western world, right? So we will always have, you know, supply chains, you know, that will get developed in the country. Um, and as you know, these things, you know, exit uh, from, from other areas of the world, uh, they may not just straight go back to the US or Western Europe, you know, some of them may just come over here. So I, I, I you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough one, but it's not a given that it's all negative, negative, right? Um, and, and we have to bear that in mind. Uh, obviously, if, 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 if the situation, you know, uh, changes, you know, dramatically, uh, then we are going to alter our plan, right? You know, all plans are uh, dynamic. Um, uh, you assume a certain baseline, you know, when you think about, you know, the growth. I mean, during the pandemic, you know, I was running a corporate bank. Uh, at that point of time, you guys used to ask the question all the time, you know, this dramatic growth, will it lead to NPA lowering of, you know, asset quality? None of that has materialized. But uh, at that point of time, when in 2019, February, you know, we went through our budgeting cycle and come April, when we were under lockdown, we went out and increased our budget in corporate bank. Right? So, so things are dynamic and, and we moderated it, you know, a little bit in uh, SME. Uh, so we will, you know, basically look uh, at it, right, you know, rather than uh, just say, okay, you know, this is what we have to do. So we'll have, we'll see. But I think, you know, basically, as you can see until June, uh, that much visibility you have, you look all right. Um, and then in by June, you know, it, it should be clear, you know, what will be the shape of the conflict and how the world order changes and, you know, uh, whether the inflation is, you know, for the long haul or not. And then we'll take a call, yeah. Perfect. Then maybe in the interest of time, I'll just squeeze in the last two questions, uh, more macro. So either Srini and Rahul, what you see on the ground is, uh, there is um, a slowdown in rural demand, right? That reflects in two wheelers, tractors, FMCG companies uh, selling soap soil, talking about a slowdown. Uh, crops not been bad. So is it sentiment? Is it some impact from rural savings getting a little uh, depleted because of COVID? Uh, what? Uh... Yes. Uh, so, so, so COVID, you know, basically savings, you know, did get depleted. You know, there was uh, January, which was an issue. Uh, but look at, you know, basically the wheat crop that is coming in uh, the month of uh, April, uh, you know, uh, people are saying that they've not, you know, seen these prices or expected levels of profitability in the last decade or more, right? Soybean prices are high, cotton prices are high, you go staple after staple, so there is money. In fact, today the issue is that as we are, you know, approaching quarter end, um, uh, you continue to acquire customers, you continue to make the disbursement, but you also have a lot of um, uh, funds that come in. 
uh, because sales are happening or you know government is releasing money and you know that comes and uh, uh, pulls you down in terms of you know basically your earning assets right uh, and it's not a bad thing that people are paying you uh, uh, but uh, but it's uh, it's sort of all right i mean that's not uh, uh, the thing that i see yes there is a a pandemic you know i mean there's a lot of um, research i have also read through in terms of case shaped people at you know the really uh, lower end you know fallen below the poverty line uh, they're not able to you know go out and you know purchase two wheeler and that's an indication etc but i think from what i see in my client base you know which is across 100000 villages in you know about half a million farmers or so you know i basically feel uh, comfortable you know with uh, with that situation today and in fact you know i i i i think that it is only credit positive you know because the cash flows are going to remain very strong perfect and uh, the last question is um, what do you say is a larger contributor of your growth rate right or growth expectation so market expansion uh, market share gain or formalization of like you know credit to those segments it's uh, all the three it's a easy one <laughs> i knew that was coming but no this has been uh, super helpful we we have taken a bit of Uh, more time than what we'd budgeted for but uh, this has been uh, very helpful very insightful uh, rahul uh, shrini ajit and the whole team uh, so thank you for joining us and uh, and yeah we we look forward to uh, more such interactions and more importantly as uh, investors request and we request hopefully some more uh, disclosures as well as we go along sure anything thank you, uh, thank you and uh, see you uh, shrini and uh, see you rahul take care thank you thanks for engaging bye bye and and thank you participants for joining in bye bye